We are going to begin by reviewing some of the different topics in general chemistry. And one of the most important ones we need to start out with is naming and writing names of formulas. And remember, when we're naming things, we always have the cation, first followed by the anion, and we need to have a balance of charges. So in other words, if I'm writing a, an ionic compound and I have a plus two ion, and if I have a minus one ion, I need to have a balance of charges. So the plus two needs to be balanced with two minus ones. So that's the simple thing. Okay, so let's look at an example of that. And I have calcium, which is two plus, and chloride, which is one minus. This gives me CaCl2, which we then are going to name. When we name it, we name the cation first, followed by the anion. This is calcium. This is chloride. Okay, now there's a lot of things that can go into this. And I wanna break it down uh, very simply. When we look at something, uh, if I give you a formula in order to write the name, uh, first thing I want you to do is look at the first element. And we're going to use this to determine the naming system. Now, at the same time, we've also learned how to name organic compounds. So if you have an organic compound, you'll recognize the condensed structure or line structure or something like that. That's going to be a different naming system. We're looking mainly at the inorganic naming system where we're going to have uh, combinations of cation, anion, covalently bonded molecules, or acids. Okay, so if we look at the first element, we have three choices. It's either going to be a metal, a non-metal, or an acid. And we will tell this if it's an acid because the first element is going to be H. Now, remember there are also organic acids, but that's a different naming system. So if it starts with a metal, we're going to name it as a cation. Okay, and One of the biggest things we need to realize is that, yes, there is a polyatomic cation. That's ammonium. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But for the most part, our metals are either those that have a consistent charge, they only have one charge, or they could have possible more two or three charges, or even more than that. If they have more than one possible charge, we need to use a Roman numeral. So I am going to put a parenthesis there to remind you to look at that. And then we need to name the anion. Now with the anion, if it's an element, we change the ending to IDE, done, okay? If it's a polyatomic ion, we need to know the name of the polyatomic ion. Uh, how do you know the names of polyatomic ions? You know them. You just have to have experience with them and memorize them. I will tell you right now, if you don't know nitrate, carbonate, hydroxide, and sulfate, this is going to be really tough for you, okay? By this point, you shouldn't even have to think about those, but we'll have that. Now, we could also have things like sulfite, SO3, and you know that doesn't quite look like sulfate. All right. So this is our simple system, and now I can go a lot more detail into this, but this is a review, not me teaching the material. Now with non-metal, if the first element is a non-metal, we're only going to look at, for the most part, binary compounds, binary two elements of non-metals, such as CO2 or N2O5. And on this one, unless it's ammonium, if it's ammonium, it goes up into our ionic naming system. Otherwise, we're going to use the prefix system. So, for example, if it's N2O5, nitrogen. How many of them? Two. How do I say two nitrogens? Di, nitrogen. How do I say five? Penta, penta oxide. So, mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, and deca. That's what we're going to use. And if it's an acid, we have two possibilities. So I want you to count elements. Now, again, there's one obvious exception to this, and that is the 
acid that is made with a hydroxide, HNOH, which we have its own special name for. I'll let you figure that one out on your own. But when we count the elements, if there are two, it's a binary acid. And we're going to name it hydro acid. If it's a ternary, or it's going to have more than that, it's going to be a H plus the polyatomic ion. And in this case, we are not going to use the hydro. Hydro is for a binary system, not for um, using polyatomic ions. Now, if the polyatomic ion ends in eight, we change the ending to ic acid. If it ends in ITE, we change it to OUS acid. Okay, so this is just a simple thing. You can look at it, you can figure out what are the uh, big pitfalls that we have here. Uh, well, if it starts out as a non-metal, we're going to have a uh, prefix naming system. If it starts out with a metal, this thing right here, that Roman numeral is gonna be important for you. So we need to pay attention to that. Now the other thing that we could do is kind of do it in reverse, okay? If we are given the name and we're asked to write the formula, we're basically gonna do it reverse. So if it's an acid, it will contain acid in the name. Maybe I can write here. Uh, if it contains acid in the name, we know we're gonna write H, and if we see hydro, it's going to be H plus an element. And we're going to always look. If the element has a minus two charge, we'll need two hydrogens. So for all of these formulas that we write out, if there are ions involved, we need to balance the ions. I'm not going to go through that right now. Um, and if it's no hydro, okay, so we look for hydro if there are H plus an element. If there's no hydro, uh, we look for ic acid, and that's H plus the ATE ion if it's OUS. Ah, if I can write. It's H plus the ITE ion. And that's if we, if we see the name acid. Next thing we're going to look for is prefixes. If you see prefixes like mono, di, tri, et cetera, use it. Okay, so we've eliminated two of the possibilities, the acids and um, our prefix system. So in the remainder of the naming, or of the, if we have the name, what we're looking for is a cation anion. So look at the cation, figure it out. Now what I like to do is, let's say I have copper two phosphate. Okay, copper, write its formula down. Now I also need to know its charge. How am I gonna know its charge? It's a two, how do I know there's a two? It's right there, okay? Some of them like silver is always gonna be a plus one, zinc, cadmium are always gonna be a plus two. Uh, aluminum is always a plus three, and group one and two are always going to be plus one or plus two. You'll need to know those. But I just like to write the charge here so that I don't get it stuck in my formula. I don't want to put charges in the formula unless it's actually charged. Then I have phosphate, which is a PO4. I know that one is a minus three. Okay, so how do I balance that? Uh, a two and a three, I need three of these and two of these. I really don't need the parentheses around the copper, just around the phosphate, and we have our formula. And that is a really quick review of naming and nomenclature. I will be posting more videos for review after this.